T minus one minute and counting. have a go for auto sequence start. Discovery's onboard computers have primary control of all the vehicle's critical functions. 15. 12. 10. PLS is go for main engine start. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And booster ignition and liftoff of Space Shuttle Discovery, taking the space station to full power for full science. This is Mission Control Houston. Discovery roll program. Roger roll, Discovery. Discovery's roll maneuver is complete and is now in a heads down position on track for its flight to the International Space Station. Discovery flying 365 miles per hour, one and a half, one and a half miles in altitude, seven miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center. Discovery's engines are throttling down as the orbiter passes through the area of maximum pressure on the vehicle. Discovery, go at throttle up. Discovery, go at throttle up. Three main engines on board are throttling back up. Now one minute, 12 seconds into the flight, Discovery flying at 1,800 miles per hour, 10 miles in altitude, and 11 and a half miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center. At liftoff, the fully fueled shuttle boosters and external tank weighed four and a half million pounds. The total thrust at launch was 6,425,000 pounds. All systems continue to function well, three good main engines, three good power generating fuel cells, and three good auxiliary power units for the hydraulic system. We will now stand by for burnout and separation of the solid rocket boosters. Combined, the twin boosters provide 5.3 million pounds of thrust to propel the orbiter towards space. Discovery now flying 3,600 miles per hour, 32 miles in altitude, 43 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center. Discovery, two engine TAL. Discovery can reach a transoceanic abort landing in the event of a single engine failure. However, all three main engines are still operating well. Discovery now flying at 4,300 miles per hour, 48 miles in altitude, and 83 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center. In only about 30 seconds, they're going to be past the point where they could even possibly return to the Kennedy Space Center, and then the next backup landing positions would be uh, at fields either in Spain or in France. If they had to abort, they would abort to Europe. But so far, so good. They're at the point pretty yeah, soon, as a matter of fact, where they could make it over there on just one engine, but for all three are operating just perfectly. There you see the camera, and I will stop if we hear NASA talking. You see the camera that's installed on the external fuel tank at the bottom of your screen. Of course, it's pitch black up there. And the belly of the orbiter 
on top. Discovery, negative return. You heard that negative return. Copies, negative return. We're going to Europe at the very least. <laughs> Discovery is now flying too high and too fast to return to the Kennedy Space Center and the Space Shuttle landing facility in the event of an engine failure. The one thing more beautiful than a daytime Four launch is a nighttime launch, and there's nothing more beautiful than a nighttime launch with not a cloud in the sky. Let's take a look again at the launch only just about four and a half minutes ago of Space Shuttle Discovery. That's the view from the uh, access arm, fills with flame. Once again, that's a live shot, and uh, do not be concerned. I say that without full analysis, quite obviously, but we always see that kind of condensation, and hopefully that's, that's all it is, uh, uh, peeling away. It could be little bits of foam, but at this point, there is no danger at all of a collision, because they're, they're most of the way to space. The atmosphere is so thin. There's no danger at all of a collision from any foam that would peel from the external fuel tank uh, with the orbiter itself. Sometimes you can tend to forget that there are human beings on board that vehicle that you see at the uh, upper right side of your screen, the orbiter itself. And one of those human beings of the seven on board won't be coming home in 13 days. He'll stay at the space station. It's Japanese space agency astronaut Koichi Wakata. He's a great guy. I, he's flown twice before on American shuttles. And I got to meet him in Houston at the Johnson Space Center. And I asked him about the food but we're not going to talk about it right now because you look at the clock, we're only a minute from separation. We'll come to that after separation. We'll just stay on this shot because that is live as we are uh, seven and a quarter minutes into the flight. Between just about now and separation a minute from now, they're going to increase their speed. They're right now going about 13,000 miles per hour and they'll increase their speed by another 4,000 miles per hour by the time they reach the very point of space. At that point, they'll be going nine times as fast as a rifle bullet. So we'll listen to NASA and watch as separation is due to come in about 40 seconds. downrange from the Kennedy Space Center. And engine cutoff is confirmed. Discovery, Houston, nominal Miko, Ohms 1 not required. Copy that, Ohms 1 not required. And remember, 
It is the camera and the external and fuel external tank that tank are falling. Separation is confirmed the now. orbiter has been pushed just a little bit away just to ensure against the collision. Flying at 17,500 miles per hour.